This is part two in my three-part series about design cycles on glass circuit boards. If you're curious how I came to find about the problems that I was solving here, click video one to your left. If you'd like to see how I populate these boards, click video two. But if you're curious how I actually print the glass circuit boards, just keep on watching. In this video, I use ferric chloride and potassium hydroxide, and I do not go over safety measures necessary when dealing with these chemicals. So, please use other resources before attempting PCB manufacture. So, I found the problems with the board and I corrected them. So now I can export as a postscript file. This is a vector format, which isn't really that useful for a lot of things, so I import it into GIMP. You can do any, just about any editor, Photoshop, whatever. Grayscale and a little bit of anti-aliasing really helps out. Grayscale makes it so it takes up less space. I crop it, I can invert the colors because I'm doing a negative process, and I flip it so I can put the, uh, the toner side down. Then I can resave it off as a useful format. In this case, I'm doing a PNG, which can be easily dropped into OpenOffice here and then I can just make multiple copies. You always make multiple copies of boards if you can fit it at all because you'll always mess one or two up. It's just easier to make a bunch of copies and then just throw stuff out when it doesn't work out. I uh, go set up to print and print the as dark as I possibly can. The night is your friend. And uh, in this case I'm using a $37 laser printer. This is a Pantom laser printer. It's really cheap and it produces great prints. Now, what I do is I take my glass. In this case, I'm using these mic microscope slides, but I have printed much larger pieces. Microscope slides are just convenient because they're pre-cut. And I use acetone to degrease. There are better degreasers, but I'm not really that good of an engineer to know which is which. I use copper from Nimrod Hall. Uh, this is just, uh, I believe, 1 mil copper or 1.4 mil copper, and I sandpaper it or sorry, uh, 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 steel wool. Steel wool makes it so it has a really nice sheen to it. It has this anisotropic effect, and it also seems to help the, uh, the glue to stick better. So always, always, always sandpaper, and try to do it in a uniform direction. It makes it look really neat. This Loctite 3301 is just amazing. I had used several different types, like many, many different types of glues, and I finally settled on this one because it has a very low viscosity, which makes it easy to squeegee it to the edges, and it's resistant to uh, the potassium hydroxide that I use later on in the process, whereas other materials will just disintegrate immediately when it, they come in contact with it. I can put the microscope slides face down and squeegee them around. Conveniently, you can see in, in through the back there where any bubbles are, and you can apply force on those bubbles in order to get them to the edges. And uh, just kind of squeegee them on and squish them down, and then blast it with UV light. I use a pretty easy to use grow light, and I just blast it for a couple minutes. A lot of people use this in the sun to cure. Uh, I don't know, it's just whatever goes. You can I'm sure you can find something as long as it's emitting enough UV light. I'm cleaning off the boards here so they don't have quite as much residue. Now once that's done, not all of the material is going to be completely cured, but it's enough to hold all the copper on pretty good. I also fold the copper a little bit down around the edges so that I know the limits of where the glass is underneath. This helps with positioning later on. So for each one of these, I'm flipping them over and adding a little bit of creasing. So right now, we're at the point where we basically have a circuit board. And it's time to do the rest of the process, which is pretty much the same as any other circuit board. So I clean it off, and I use Riston, just like I do on my regular circuit boards. Uh, Riston is a gel that, before it's exposed, is kind of just a gel. But once it's exposed to UV, it becomes a plastic. So it has a protective coating on both sides. It's what I'm pulling off here. And uh, many times, it, sometimes I guess it does get caught. So many times what I'll do is I'll use much larger sheets and then cut it after I've peeled away. Uh, in this case, I just decided to cut them individually. No real reason why. And uh, you can just peel off the protective coating. I do it by kind of pulling at the edge. Yeah, that peel and feel, and if you've ever seen that subreddit. I use a little bit of water on the, the slide before I apply the wrist on, and that prevents it from sticking unevenly and makes it so that I can kind of squeegee it around and push it around in order to get it really flat. And uh, just a little bit more water, 
and applying the, the wrist on. So it starts to stick even though there's some water there, but it doesn't really stick until after it goes through uh, the next step here. I'm going to put it through a, a laminator. The laminator really helps to set the, the, the wrist on. So look at this piece of history here. I, I thought it was pretty cool that I still have some scrap paper over left from 95, but you, you might not. It's, I'm sure this is actually older than some of the people who are watching this right now. So I take the, uh, the, the pieces and I slide them into this little kind of holder. And the reason you do this is the wrist on itself will actually gum up the laser printer. But if you put it inside of a little sheet of paper like that, it prevents you from damaging the, uh, from damaging the, sorry, the, the, the laminator. So put it through. Uh, I usually do uh, wrist on up first and then wrist on down twice. I've tried a number of different combinations. That seems to be what works best. I'm not really sure why. Um, uh, it just is. Uh, one other note I forgot to mention, the water. Uh, make sure it's cold water because if it's hot water, it can have little bubbles in it, which can cause all sorts of problems later on. You want it to really be not bubbly water. So you can take the uh, circuit boards with the wrist on applied out. The wrist-on still has a protective coating on it, and it's still gel. It hasn't been cured yet. Um, so I kind of cut around the outside edge now just to, to get rid of some. Sometimes I'll actually pull off the protective coating before cutting, or either which way, it, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, as long as, at the end of the day, you have basically a circuit board with wrist-on applied. Um, once it's applied, you can then start to peel off the protective coating on the top of the, the wrist-on there and it just just peels off uh, both sides of the wrist on have the protective coating on them um, prevents it from sticking to everything and it's it's brother's really sticky gel um, but once once you have the top off of uh, of all three here uh, we need something to prevent the transparencies from sticking to it right now i use uh, three in one oil i've seen some other people mention olive oil so i really want to try that sometime uh, just see if that's any better so I take the transparencies and I, I cut them to, to suit so they're about the right size. So it just means I cut around what's black. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll take the 3-in-1 the oil and dab it on the, the wrist on there. And by making it not stick, it, it creates a very, very good interface that doesn't have very much of like a, a change in index of refraction. So you get more uniform uh uh, exposure as compared to a uh, just a regular air interface. It also makes it less sticky and easier to get off later. So it's just it's much more convenient to apply uh, apply something in between. So once all of these are nice and squeegee down, all the air bubbles out. I can blast it again with UV light. Uh, you'll really have to to change the exposure time based on. Uh, the environment that you're in and the distance to the light and how bright your light is. For me, it's about three minutes. Um, and then I get the water moving uh, just for the next step of this. Once it's exposed for three minutes, then I can go and I can take some water. This is warm water and put in some uh, washing soda. Washing soda is not what I used to use, but I had a problem and I found that the problem was that I had been using way too much uh, washing soda by concentration before. So by having very little washing soda by concentration, it develops really nicely. It's actually better than the sodium bicarbonate that I had used before the, the baking soda. So I, I do recommend doing what the, the data sheet for Riston says and actually use washing soda. What this does is anywhere that the Riston is still a gel, it just washes away. It just wipes away. But anywhere that the wrist on has been exposed to the UV light, so anywhere that's clear on the mask, it's turned into a plastic, which the sodium, uh, the, the sodium carbonate will not eat through. And what this does is it protects the copper underneath of all those, those plastic areas from this, ferric chloride. Now, a lot of people really don't like ferric chloride. I'm not sure why. For me, I found it definitely to be the best. I've tried a couple other chemicals, including uh, some of the citric acid ones and the sodium perchlorate, and I've never really messed much with the, uh, the cupric chloride, but um, whatever. I have a landfill I can just take this used ferric chloride to, and it's $34 a gallon, which lasts me like a year. At any rate, I can then just take this, kind of dump it back and forth, and I use a sponge in order to uh, get it like back and forth and wash away all of the, the copper 
that's that's interacting with it and you can see that you can start to see through straight through the the glass circuit board there so everywhere that there's the wrist on that's turned into plastic the copper remains and everywhere that it's not the the ferric chloride has been able to eat right through and kill all the copper once all this is done i can store the the ferric chloride sludge it also has like mixed in copper copper sludge so you really don't want to put this down the drain you really don't want to put this down the drain but it's totally fine to go take to uh, whoever accepts your hazmat materials and everything else so then I just dry it off everything's just dandy just dry and then you still have to take off the excess wrist on so right now underneath of these parts here is is copper but you can see this kind of purple sheen and that's the wrist on and I use potassium hydroxide and the reason behind this even though it's an unusual one instead of sodium hydroxide is because the potassium hydroxide doesn't seem to bother the uh, the Loctite 3301 at least in the concentrations that I'm using it so it's it's really important to find a chemical that will eat away the wrist on that's on top of the copper but not eat away the glue that's holding the copper to the glass and that's kind of been the big thing that stopped me from really taking off with these glass circuit boards so I can then just kind of wipe away you can see it peeling off just coming away the uh, the wrist on and exposing just this beautiful bare copper board uh, then I just rinse them off sometimes I'll, I'll clean them off a little bit more I don't use acetone whenever finishing off my circuit boards here if for glass because acetone will eat away the uh, the lock type material underneath it's really sad I love using acetone to clean off my circuit boards but it's just not possible when you're using the uh, the lock tight on the glass circuit boards so once that's done, you can just pour that down the drain. It's it's analogous to drain cleaner, and uh, everything that I found online indicated that it was just fine to pour down the drain. So now you can see the beautiful glass circuit board. This is a complete uh, microscope slide uh, sized circuit board for the uh, the ESP8266 project. You'll notice that there's still kind of a film around the outside where the Loctite was uh, kind of bound up around the edges conveniently though that just peels away really easily uh, just clean that up and then you're left with a beautiful little circuit board there uh, one of the problems that I sometimes run into is I try to push my traces all the way right up to the edges and unless when you're applying the transparency if you're not spot on sometimes you'll have a little bit of the trace go over the edge and on the the one I decided to go with the actual circuit board I decided to use for this it did have a little bit of copper going over the edge thanks for watching how the glass circuit boards are printed now check this next video to see how I actually make them and get them working so it's still kind of murky. You can't quite see crystal clear through it. So uh, one last step here. We're going to go and spray this thing with some polyurethane.